On this week's show, Amazon announces a hold on unverified seller funds. Etsy continues to find new and creative ways to tick off their sellers. And I sell a bunch more books. What is up, Galaxians? Welcome to episode number 207 of the Galaxy CDs, Rocks and Flips Reseller Talk podcast. My name is Ryan, and I will be your host. We've got a little bit of reselling news this week. I covered in episode 206, kind of a special midweek episode, a couple of big announcements, the eBay Summer Seller Update, and some details on the USPS Ground Advantage program that goes into effect next Sunday. So if you haven't caught that episode yet, you'll want to go check that out. There's some pretty... I think some pretty useful information in there, some of which we're going to recover a little bit today. There have been some additional announcements, so we'll get into that. Uh, Obviously, a big update from Amazon, and we'll talk about some stuff that I sold in the back half of the show, so you'll want to be sure to stick around for that. So let's get into this reselling news. News updates. So this would be like the fourth or fifth episode in a row now that we have found our way to talking about this Inform Consumers Act that went into effect last week on June 27th. Amazon made an announcement last week that they are going to hold funds of unverified sellers beginning on Friday, July the 7th. I believe that's Friday. Uh, Amazon will hold sellers funds starting July 7th for those who have not provided it with required information it requested to comply with said Inform Consumers Act, which did take effect on June 27th. The Amazon updated its notice to sellers Monday evening, reminding them of its outreach to sellers covered by the law, requesting them to complete additional verification checks to ensure compliance. I have heard from some Amazon sellers who have indicated, as we have discussed on this show, that that process has not been very smooth. It has not been easy for sellers to comply with. Some people that I know personally have verified that they also had some difficulty getting that done. So that continues to be a problem. Sellers have received notifications that their accounts may be deactivated. And now this announcement on top of it that their funds will actually potentially be hold. So uh, if you do not provide the required information within 10 days of this notification, disbursements for your Amazon selling account will be put on hold starting July the 7th. Amazon also told sellers that once it fully verified the information they provided it, the account deactivation warning banner related to the Inform Act would be removed from their account health page. If you're a seller on Amazon, you can let me know (laughs) uh, if that has actually worked for you. Uh, The banner was a sore point with sellers who said Amazon had been blaming a glitch for the error message continuing to appear even after a seller had already been verified. This round of verifications, they note, isn't the last for sellers. Amazon said it might need to re-verify information if sellers make changes, and it stated we are also obligated by law to ask you to confirm that your selling on Amazon account information is up to date at least once a year. That should be fairly easy to do. Once you've done this once, assuming that nothing changes, I would I would assume that the re-verification of the already existing information would probably go pretty smoothly, but... What do I know? (laughs) A few sellers had replied to the message on Monday night stating they had still been unable to complete that verification process. So that continues to be an issue over on Amazon, and it's going to get potentially pretty nasty on Friday when seller funds may end up going on hold. So if you are on Amazon and you have not done that yet, uh, you probably want to get that figured out as quickly as you can. Uh, This article over on Daily Dot from last week, uh, Etsy has so gone down the drain. The small business owner says her Etsy shop was shut down and all of her customers refunded, even though she had already shipped out all the product. We've talked over the last few episodes about some of the things that Etsy is implementing in order to protect buyers. And one of the flags that they look for are new sellers who just pop on the site and all of a sudden have a really high level of sales. And that appears to be what the case is with this particular seller. A small business owner from Vancouver, Canada is pleading with Etsy after she claims the site shut down her store and refunded all of her orders, even though she had already shipped out all of the product. In a video with over 177,000 views, TikTok user Samantha alleges that Etsy scammed her out of hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. 
She runs a cat-focused dental hygiene company. Knowing that many sellers had found success on Etsy, she decided to try to do that as well. She listed some products on the site, and then she sent a promotional email out to her existing customer base, offering them a 30% discount for ordering on Etsy, which is a natural thing to do. You want to promote your new shop and send people over there. This was going to be kind of a loss leader for her. According to Samantha, the move was simply designed to draw more attention to the store as the hefty discount meant she was not making much of a product. However, after she had already fulfilled many orders from this sale, Etsy informed her that her store was being shut down in the process. Uh, Samantha claims the site reached out to all the customers and told them they could get a refund or say they still wanted the item. This, despite the fact again, that everything had already been shipped after many users claimed that they still wanted the item. Samantha says that Etsy simply decided to go ahead and refund them anyway. <laughs> oh man, Etsy, God love you. Uh, she alleges that she has reached out to Etsy multiple times to try to figure out what happened, but she's only received replies from bots. This is an ongoing complaint from Etsy sellers is that they have a really, really difficult time actually getting a hold of a human being who can actually help them with an issue like this. She says, I get that you need to create a safe environment on these platforms so that people aren't getting scammed. I completely understand that, but to be refunding orders that have already been placed, already have valid tracking without contacting the seller like, hey, what's going on? I don't even know what the problem is. They're just refunding people. Numerous users online, had also complained about Etsy in the past, ranging from their allegedly poor security to high fees for sellers. So there's a litany of complaints uh, with Etsy. These complaints continued in the comments section of this video. Uh, they go on to quote some of those. I'm not going to belabor that. They do point out at the end of this article that Etsy has admitted finally that they closed her store accidentally and they are going to make all of this right. So all's well that ends well, I guess. But we talked about, like I said, over the last couple of episodes where these sites are using these AI tools and bots to try to police potentially fraudulent sellers, potentially counterfeit or fraudulent or stolen merchandise. And Etsy in particular seems to have a real problem with that being really overly aggressive and in a case like this, eliminating a, a valid new seller and creating a bunch of drama. So if you're a seller on Etsy and you've run into anything like that and you're watching on YouTube, let me know down in the video comments below what your experience was with Etsy. We talked last week about how Etsy had added uh, tag bubbles to users' photos in their listings that took potential buyers off of a seller's listing into a search results page. Now they have added yet another really interesting tool to the arsenal. Sellers are reporting that Etsy is including links to other sellers listings when it sends the seller's shipping notification to their buyer. Uh, like we talked about, Etsy has already crossed the line by displaying ads on sellers listing pages, but this takes it to another level. I just, uh, one seller says, I just printed a shipping label and once again, this happened the other day as well. In the shipping notification I sent to the buyer, Etsy inserted six pairs of earrings from other shops with the blurb, you might like these too. Again, from a marketing standpoint, I totally understand why Etsy would wanna do that, but they should at least be referring in my opinion, to other items from that same seller. Obviously, I'm sure Etsy's argument would be they want to cast as broad a net as possible in these marketing messages to try to capture business for Etsy. They, let's be real, <laughs> they don't care about you or me as individual sellers. They care about sales in the aggregate. So it is what it is, but this is what they're doing. I could not find any evidence of this, but I don't ship on Etsy directly, I use Pirate Ship for all mine, and it marks that the order has been has been shipped and it updates tracking, but I'm not sure it actually sends out a confirmation email. So if you are using Etsy shipping and you can see these confirmation emails that have been sent, let me know again in the video comments below, or you can email me at galaxycds at gmail.com. And let me know if you have seen this too, but this is again, uh, another instance of Etsy probably trying to do something clever with their marketing that just is not uh, not good for their sellers. We talked about on the last show that 
Etsy had not provided any guidance yet for how they were going to implement the new USPS Ground Advantage program. They have since done so. They say that as a seller on Etsy, you will not have to do anything. When this change is implemented, your shipping policies, while they will still be titled the same, are automatically on the back end going to be updated to the new program. So you will not have to do anything unless you want to do kind of title edits for your shipping policies so that you better know what they are. They said it will be a completely seamless transaction and no action is required by the sellers. That's a pretty cool situation, unlike eBay, which is <laughs> potentially going to be a bit, of, a bit of drama, as we talked about in that last bit. Last thing from Etsy, uh, they are going to do a product photography workshop for home goods and furniture sellers. This is going to be on July 26th from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, they say in the session, you'll learn from freelance photographer Eric Valland as he shares best practices for photographing goods for the home. He'll share tips for smaller decor items as well as larger items like wall art and furniture. During the workshop, Eric will conduct a live demonstration and walk sellers through how to easily capture eye-catching photos with tips on focus, lighting, and more. I believe there is an RSVP link in this article over on Etsy. And as always, I will link to these in the show notes and the video description below. So that's uh, that's a quick wrap on the news. Not a lot new there since whatever that was, Wednesday or Thursday, when we updated on the uh, eBay Summer Seller Update and the USPS Ground Advantage program. But I do have quite a few things in the What Sold segment. So it's been, uh, again, a pretty good week. If you're following me over on Instagram, at Galaxy CDs Rocks, uh, I, I sold 87 listings last week. So the I continue to kind of do better than probably I would have expected with summer slowdown from some of the things that I've implemented. I did also go in and find, I talked in the last episode about eBay making a change to their uh, promoted listing standard campaign with the dynamic campaign. I did go in and up my max to 7% uh, with a cap and switch it to dynamic just to see what the, the result would be. I've had a lot of stuff that has gone through at 7%, which is kind of what I expected would happen, but I have had some stuff go through at a little bit lower rate, so that's good. Uh, and my impressions over the last five days when I've been doing this are up significantly. So getting that rate up to 7% and going to dynamic, even though I've capped it, uh, seems to be having the desired impact of getting a little bit more exposure and keeping my sales Pretty decent. So we're going to cover some of those today. This first one uh, over on eBay, Alone by Richard E. Bird from 1938. It was a G.P. Putnam's and Sons hardcover. I had it listed for $24.99 plus media mail shipping. I sent out a 15% off offer on it and sold it for $21.24. This was part of a big lot of books that I own for, gosh, I think about a nickel. I was at a sale not too long ago and there was a whole shelf full of old kind of spiral bound, comb bound cookbooks and they wanted a dollar a piece for them. And a lot of the, a lot of the church ones and school ones, if I can get them for a quarter, I'll grab them. Uh, they sell for $7.99, $8.99. They're not anything fantastic, but when you can get them for a quarter, they're nice fillers just to kind of keep things moving and keep some sales being generated. They had a ton of those, but at a dollar a piece, I, did, I wasn't interested in them. But I did go through the entire shelf and I found a whole mess of like Dutch and Amish books. And I did grab all of those. This is one of the first ones of those that has sold sweet things and such from the land of the Pennsylvania Dutch. This was actually signed by the person who compiled it. It's from 1984. It was in really, really good condition. I listed it for $27.99 or best offer. Got a watcher, sent out an offer for 15% off and sold it for $23.79. So those are probably ones to be on the lookout for. Uh, the, the Dutch, the Pennsylvania Dutch and the Amish from Indiana, Pennsylvania, Ohio. I'm doing pretty well with those. So if you're out and you see these spiral bound cookbooks, they're worth taking a peek at. 
This was an interesting old book. This was part of the big 15,000 book lot, so it's another one I'm into for under a nickel. The First Cooperative College, History of College of Engineering at the University of Cincinnati. This was a massive, probably 16 by 12, illustrated hardcover book. Another one that I had listed for $27.99 plus media mail shipping. I received an offer on this one of $24, and I went ahead and took that. Not a real common book. I think there were only a couple of these listed when I found this book. Uh, Another one from that sale I just mentioned previously. This was Howard Johnson's Presents Old Time Ice Cream Soda Fountain Recipes. This was a booklet from 1971, which was actually a reprint of a booklet, I think, from the 1940s. was in really, really good shape. Again, I picked it up for a dollar, sold for $24.99 plus media mail shipping. Another big old book, the Smart Set Anthology of World Famous Authors. This is from 1934, by published by Halcyon House. It was a hardcover, had it listed for $29.99, received an offer of $25 plus media mail shipping. This was part of a big lot that I owned for about 16 cents. Here I've got two books. I've had these for the longest time. It was part of a big estate buyout that I did probably three years ago. I got a, I had a whole set of these uh, Library of Valuable Knowledge. I didn't have the complete set, so I broke them out individually. I had, I've had i had them listed on eBay for years. <laughs> it feels like for like 20 bucks plus shipping. Also had them listed on Mercari, and I had one person that bought two of them at $25 each with free shipping. The Story of a Piece of Coal from 1913 and The Story of a Grain of Wheat also from 1913. So these were really interesting old books that kind of went through the life cycle of whatever the item was, in this case, a piece of wheat and a piece of coal. This person bought two. They did not try to do a bundle offer. This is, as I talked about, I think in last week or two weeks ago episode, I'm not really getting bundle offers on Mercari. People are just still buying things individually. Mercari still does not have a way for sellers to manually bundle items. So that's kind of a hassle, but it is what it is. These books I own for a buck a piece and they sold for $25 each. This was a cool item. I actually bought two of these. I was at a church sale probably five or six weeks ago. And I found these old American optical monocular microscopes. They were called the series 160. Big kind of heavy duty school type microscopes. And I asked them if there was some place I could plug them in and try them out. They both powered up. They both seemed to work. So I bought both of them for $5 a piece. One of them I'm keeping for myself (laughs) because they're really nice. Uh, I've got a couple of 10 year old boys that come over and they like looking at this stuff. So these are really, really cool old uh, microscopes at five bucks a piece. Essentially, I paid for one of them out of my own pocket at five bucks and I bought one from the business funds at five bucks and it sold for $27.99 plus UPS shipping over on eBay. Here's another interesting one. This is a set of books. I was at a neighborhood garage sale actually in my neighborhood that I was not participating in as a seller. And I was just walking around the neighborhood just to see if there was anything out there. And I found a handful of books. Not, I think I only bought like six things in an hour of walking around, but I found this set of cookbooks and I'm at the sale and I'm looking at them and I'm like, I asked, there were two teenage boys sitting on the porch kind of overseeing what was going on. I'm like, how much do you want for these two cookbooks? And the kid was like, "Ah, I don't know. How about $3 a piece? And I'd already looked them up and I knew they were worth about $38 as a set. And I was like, "Mm, six bucks seems a little high, but let me think about it. And as I'm doing that, mom, comes out onto the porch and she says, oh gosh, you're looking at those old cookbooks, a dollar a piece and they're yours. (laughs) Uh, So I was like, okay, I like you a lot better than I like these two because they told me they were going to be $3 a piece. (laughs) I said, mom, you might want to go back in the house. These kids are trying to make you some money. So I got a dollar each in these $2 total for Meta Givens Modern Encyclopedia of Cooking. This was volumes one and two, fifth edition hardcovers from 1949. They were in Pretty good physical condition. And again, sold on Mercari for $44 with free shipping. 
This is another one that I picked up at an estate sale. I paid a dollar for this. Uh, it was a sale that had a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of religious books and Bibles. I think I bought 10 Bibles, just legitimate Bibles at this sale. This person was a, I don't know if they were in the ministry or just a collector of Bibles, but they had all kinds of them. This one, every time I find this, I buy it. The Expositor's Study Bible. This one was the giant print edition. I'll also buy the regular print edition. King James Version from the Jimmy Swaggart Ministries from 2014. These things always bring really, really good money. Again, I'm into this for a buck, and it sold for $44.99 plus media mail shipping, which was almost $8 because this book is so big and heavy. So, again, if you're inclined to look at books at all, ever, the Expositor's Study Bible from the Jimmy Swaggart Ministries is a winner. For sale over on Etsy, uh, The Enduring Rock, The History and Reminiscences of Blackwell, Oklahoma, and the Cherokee. Really old book from, I want to say, the 1930s. Uh, picked this up again at a state sale for $1. It sold for $59.99 plus media mail shipping. So this one is this one was a, a battle. There were, I could not find anything on this book that I didn't find any comps on eBay. I didn't find anything listed on a books. There's just nothing out there. So I just threw a dart at this thing at 60 bucks and it sold within a couple of weeks. And now the flip of the week, this is one I picked up in an estate or at a, at a garage sale, actually, um, gosh, maybe a month ago for $1 and 15 cents. The machine tool reconditioning by Edward F. Connolly. It's a sixth printing, so nothing particularly special that way. From 1964, it was an illustrated hardcover. These books are in terrific demand. There are not very many of them out there. I had it listed on Mercari for $196 with free shipping. I received an offer from a guy of $150. Bucks. I'm like, you know what? I own it for a buck, and this will be my single biggest ever sa sale on Mercari that I can recall. I'm just going to go ahead and take it. So $1.15 into $150 with free shipping. It wasn't that big of a book. It shipped for $4.35 in a box. So be on the lookout for this one. If you're if you're at a sale where there are a lot of like tools and equipment, uh, this book I think was originally published in maybe the late 20s or early 30s and has had subsequent publications. I believe the company that did it is no longer around. So these things are fairly rare and they're not making any more of them that I know of. Machine Tool Reconditioning by Edward F. Connolly is a definite winner. And that, my friends, is going to put a wrap on a fairly short episode. Uh, since we had an episode just a few days ago, there's not a lot has transpired in between that date and today, so we'll keep this one fairly short and sweet. I hope you're all having a great week. I hope you have a terrific 4th of July holiday. I, for my own part, am actually going to take the day off. Uh, normally, I just go ahead and work the holiday like it's a regular day, but I'm feeling a little crispy. <laughs> uh, I've been doing, uh, as I've updated on Instagram over the last few months, 125 to 135 listings a week, and I'm I'm ready for a break. So I'm going to take a break and we will see you next week. Have a good one. You have been listening to the Galaxy CDs Rocks and Flips Reseller Talk podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in and we will catch you again next time.